Let me has it. Yeah, let me indicated she had to go. So um Okay, okay. <clears throat> just uh these are the minutes that we have. Welcome to the Augur Eight Now Working Group meeting for March eighteenth, twenty twenty four. Um Lami was here. Uh she may be back. Enoch, welcome. I had uh set up front on the Slack channel that we'd have a short design process update. And that update is basically that after we went over the design last week, we've had a number of eight knot auger folks out at the scale conference in California. So we haven't made any progress with implementing anything. Um, however, we have socialized the design work that Lamy did um, last time. And um, I think uh, if I can, I'm going to try to bring it up here. Let's see if I am able to do that. There is no link in the minute in the in the minutes down there. I'm sure. Yeah, there probably is. Um, I just went and found it though. <clears throat> so I have to share a different screen. New share. Searching through the almost billion windows open. There we go. So this is what Lamy shared with us um, last time. And we have, uh, you know, basically, so we haven't made any progress on this uh, per se because folks have been traveling, but uh, just to put a little review under the record here, uh, really what's happening here is we have a design that incorporates some of the critical styles that are in other chaos web properties. And it also um, really brings front and center the eight knot search bar. Um, a lot of people have had trouble with the search bar, not identifying it as a critical means of navigation. And so <clears throat> what we have here, I have no idea what this blue box is. But uh, what we have here is um, examples of the search and then other ways you can search. And down here is just sort of the current metadata pages. And then these over here are, um, this is a good example of how the navigation, which currently on 8 not exists at the top of the page, uh, could be moved down to a left navigation bar, which is a little bit more intuitive for people who are new to the site or come to it. So that's that um, in terms of the review. Um, Precious, welcome. Uh, did you have any questions about the design process? Should I bring that back up? Hi, Sean. Hi, Enoch. No, no, I don't have any. OK. All right, great. Um, then I will not reshare it and stay here. And so then the, the next question or the next thing that I thought we could address today is just to start to um, get to a design process. I'm sorry, answering questions about Augur data. So how do we answer uh, certain questions in Augur data? And I know Enoch, you and I have been discussing this a little bit. Um, yeah. <clears throat> on the side. Uh, Precious, uh, you've probably, have you looked, Precious, at all at uh, pulling data out of Augur, uh, for example? I haven't tried that recently. I can, okay. Can you hear me? Yep, I yep. can. Yep. All right, I haven't tried that recently. Well, is that what we're doing today? Yeah, I thought I'd uh, do a little illustration of ways that you can extract uh, data from Augur. Um, That's all I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me just uh, get started here. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
I'm just, uh, sorry, I'm looking at a project I have <clears throat> that had, um, had some things in it, but no longer seems to, um, odd. Uh, just one second here. So, um, one of the things that you can do with augers, I, I thought we'd um, start looking at maybe commits, for example, and here might be some SQL for commits. Just going to take this out of the there. So if we look at um, the let me just uh, view. There we go. So if we, for example, just want to see the, com the counts of committers here, um, this is just basically how many different uh, commits where the author is null. Um, and then for each commit email, how many hashes are there and what's the count of that for repo one? Um, so if we look at, I'm just going to bring um, up the, uh, go ahead. Sure. Do yeah. you mind? Um, uh, is is there where you could, uh, if the tables are not so many, you could first give an idea about what kind of tables you're pulling the data from? Because um, uh, I know that tables like uh, the operations table. Um, oh. <clears throat> there is a table like um, the real agar table. Yeah, so let, let me um, so let me start with so here are the the tables that we're concerned with for mm -hmm. commits are the the commits table. Okay. And we can also eventually branch out into looking at the contributors table and also contributor aliases so these would probably be the three tables that we would most look at for pulling what's commit data what's contributor aliases so contributor so contributors is um all of the oss project contributors who have been identified on the Git Forge platform um, uh, through data pulling. So um, this, this includes commit data um, that is identified by calling the Git logs. Um, and then mapping those identities back to the platform, uh, which is i.e. GitHub, GitLab, etc. And then contributor um, aliases is um, every email that a user with multiple emails associated with their commits. 
um, mapped back to the contributor via the field contrib ID um, in the contributors table. So if you can imagine, uh, in my ex using myself as an example, I've made commits to GitHub and GitLab using the emails s at goggins.com, outdoors at acm.org, uh, goggins at missouri.edu. So this commit email is typically a function of how it's configured on the computer where I'm performing the commit. And I, like most people in the universe, am not wholly consistent about using the same email every time. So the one GitHub user I have, S. Goggins, has many different emails associated with its commit logs or commit records. And so what we accomplish by <clears throat> creating this contributor aliases table is a map between S. Goggins and all of his associated um, emails. Okay. okay. So that um, um, you're sure it's not a different S. Goggins. Yes, that's correct. I'm sure it's not another. I mean, there cannot be another S. Goggins because the GitHub and oh, GitLab yeah. only only allow one user to have um, to have a, a username, right? So uh, if I was to go over here and uh, just uh, one way that I might do this is to say select. Jim Canonical. Um, and here I want to look over to contributor aliases as a table and just make sure that I remember. Um, alias email. Okay. We'll have to um, and I have to link those two tables. So I have to say where contributors dot contrib ID equals contributor aliases dot contrib ID. And since I'm just going to do this for myself. <clears throat> use this because it's simpler. So this will return all of my email aliases. And so in this particular auger instance, you can see that um, I have made commits as essegoggins.com, outdoors at acm.org, uh, two different Missouri email addresses, um, one fairly weird email address um another email address that is exactly the same as this one curiously but in mixed case so mm -hmm. that's um maybe worth normalizing and then here's another what i'd call nonsense uh email uh social team dot goggins s at source dash login dot red dot lan i have no idea what that is <laughs> um so <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, um, just, uh, I have no idea where that email came from. So these are the seven emails in this one instance of of uh, Augur, and you might see more emails than that um, in some instances of Augur. So let's see. This would be. Are you on another screen or something? Oops, yep, sorry. Um, I'm no. since I don't know who's on a laptop screen and who's on a regular screen, I did switch back over. I was just going to put this query that we wrote in there because that's a contributor alias identification query. Mm -hmm. And then here, um, 
one thing to note is that commits is a little bit of a misnomer for this table um, because the commits table because it actually contains files. So if I go back to commits, um, I generally will get uh, this. So here, basically for Augur, I'm sh oops, hang on, sorry, I forgot to switch again. So for Augur, you can see there are 10,988 commits recorded. And if we go back and look at, the web page you can see there are 10,990 commits um, on the site so we are two commits behind uh, so the commits that were made on Friday are not yet reflected mm -hmm. in the in the data but will be shortly if that makes sense to people any any questions uh, you know I guess it's just you and Megan, uh, Enoch uh, any questions yeah, I'm interested in understanding something. I know I probably am understanding it wrong, but when you say up there contributors, um, all the OSIS project contributors who have been identified on the Git Forge through data so, pooling. Um, yeah. um, is that because I know <clears throat> um Raga is only concerned with GitHub and GitLab? Um, how does Git Forge come into the mixture? So a get a get forge is just a generic expression for uh, okay. the, the okay. platform itself. Okay. So yeah, it's a uh, it's okay. not um yeah it that's it's just a generic expression. So and um and um uh, the other one <laughs> looks like there is a lot of uh, uh, data from the. Tables whose columns are so abstract to understand. Um, for example, when you say the CMT underscore GHT underscore Arthur underscore ID, mm -hmm. um, when you when when you say schema docs, is that something that um, has documentation that explains what these are? Yes. Yeah. If you go to so some documentation exists. One of the things that we can do as we go through examples um, like the ones that we're going through today is just make notes. For example, or example um, up here, I created some narrative description of contributors. Um, I should probably just tag this uh, uh, for docs later, right? So I, I did a little description of contributors and a okay. little description of contributor aliases. Mm -hmm. And down here, um, there's actually an existing um, thing that we can add to the documentation about commits actually being a slight misnomer because each row represents a commit file instead of representing a, a commit. So it's a little bit deceiving what we named it uh, going back. Where, where, where are those document? Where is that documentation? Yeah, uh, let me find it for you. It is. There's a documentation link at the top of our Slack channel. I and, hope it's updated, though. <laughs> uh, it should be. Yeah. Um, hang on. I'm clicking Augur Docs right now. So here we are. These are the Augur Docs. And the most up to date would be over in the dev branch, but main should be reasonably up to date. And here there's a link on the side called schema okay and uh you've got descriptions of tables and purposes so here's the commits table in auger makes sense makes sense and so we have a bit of um documentation that already exists and what we're talking about when i make notes in these in these minutes uh, the intention is only to make it more clear Okay, uh, I'm to, in, to, to enhance and improve these documents. Okay, I'm wondering why I hadn't seen this all along. It would have sorted out some things yesterday. Well, I mean, not yesterday, last week. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. Um, because yeah, um, uh, I, I was trying to like ask, what does this table do? Where can I get this data? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but this makes sense. Like, um, you could go through and scrape and see where you can find what you're looking for. Yeah, so I'll go back here yeah. and um, just make a note of these. This uh, read the docs link where some of the schema information already exists. And mm -hmm. as we as we go through time, of the aim, of course, is to continue to improve and enhance that documentation so that it's more useful to people. Um, so, go ahead, Enoch. Um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm curious to understand, um, do we, okay, I think this is like for, for the next um, session we may have. <laughs> I'm trying to kind of overlap it, but uh, I just want to keep it. Um, yeah, overlap. go ahead. Uh, go ahead and ask what your question is, Enoch. Because um, when I talk about a particular feature, like we've had in a discussion, my brain mm -hmm. is now trying to think like I was thinking last time. Um, I, for example, if I say commit frequency, is it a thing that I need to get by combining um, uh, by combining um, probably um, two to three queries of data and coming up with something like limit frequency or it's something I can get by just um, some columns in a table. So if you want to know uh, commit frequency, um, so let's uh let's proceed to answer that question like okay what about i'm just making a note of it here and yeah. so from a design perspective the first thing we need to know is that each commit has a timestamp. Mm -hmm. actually actually several and it's the commit I hope I may just check here what is commit commit author date but uh, let me just check it out <clears throat> it's CMT underscore author author date um, so if we want to understand commit frequency, this is the date we would group on, right? We would mm -hmm. like, uh, group on and we can do like, just, uh, it's a timestamp field. Uh, so we can, uh, normalize for day, week, month, etc. So depending on how you want to operationalize the frequency concept, you can you can write queries that identify, you know, here are all because it's a timestamp, it's uh, here are all the days. And yeah, each, um, that's each that, that, date. That... Yeah. <clears throat> That's actually what's running in my mind. Um, commit frequency. How would you define mm -hmm. commit frequency? Hmm. Is, it the how frequently there is... is it the amount yeah. of commits um, to a particular it... repo? But when you say frequency, it implies so the reason I went first to time is because anytime you use the word frequency, there's a time parameter mm -hmm. in place, right? Yeah. So you you need to think of so we need to think about time first. Which and and we need to think about what counts as the commit time, because there's also um, a uh, commit committer date, and so the distinction is that the author uh, is the person who wrote the code code and the committer is the person who 
merge the PR, MR, CR, whatever it is on a particular platform. And then if you recall what I said just a minute ago about the commits table sort of being a misnomer because it contains a row for every file, we also want to uh, group by commit, commit hash to only count commits and not commit files. Because the, remember the commits table contains a row for every file involved in a commit. Okay, so um, uh, we would say if we want commits for that have happened in a month or a year, probably I would want to use that parameter, not a day or week, because a month or a year gives me better analysis of um. Um, would would mm -hmm. I say? So from uh, a data analysis point perspective, it's a choice of the granularity that you want to understand things at. Okay. If, if you only care about if your principal concern is how is the how are the number of commits changing over time i okay. would call i would call month the month time frame coarse grained uh coarse grained meaning that it's chunking more stuff together but it's letting you get a faster longer high level view of the commit practices on a project and the commit frequency on a project so i don't need to have it down to the day uh, to see whether the number of people making commits is rising or falling over the years right month is enough month is granular enough and month month will also get you a more understandable and easily navigable set of data you could easily do it by day or week though to get finer grained understandings okay. does that make sense yeah, um, uh, at least now it makes sense because <clears throat> I know if I'm if I'm to get like um, the data of how many commits are happening on a particular repository in a given period of time, at, at least you know what to, to look at and um, yep. what actually to what parameters to consider in mind depending on um, what thing you want to get. But but um, looks looks like how you've answered my question is. Um, of course, when you define what you want to understand, you need to look like for particular columns that will specifically define, will give you the results to the question you're asking yourself. We yeah, so there's tons of questions you can ask, right? This is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because what I wanted to understand is, did the things that we talked about um last monday yeah are they yeah. things we need to like aggregate data for or they have specific columns already there that was my question for example yeah. and i brought up commit frequency just to be like is there a table for commit frequency or we need to like get it we need to get data for it so if you if you think about what we're trying to accomplish by querying the data we have the ability to make sense of a lot of data fairly quickly because we have a structured valid validated uh, schema of data. Um, you can't validate data to the extent that Augur does absent uh, structured schema. And what I'd call your attention to on the schema documentation page is that these five things at the bottom issues, commits, pull requests or change requests, contributors, people and dependencies, software dependencies, these five things at the core, these are core nouns, core aspects of open source software development and the engagement of a community of people or a group of contributors around it. And okay. I don't think you can fully understand what's happening on a project if you only look at the commit data. So from a learning how to pull data out of Augur and, and having that lead us to eight knot, I think it's useful to understand commits specifically, but then also to rec recognize that issues, pull requests, who the contributors are, which we started to talk about, and the dependencies, these are, these are critical what I'd call nouns or objects 
that uh, we care about um, and that would be the kinds of things that would compose or constitute the features you're talking about, Enoch, for later mm. analysis, mm. right? And around each of those objects, uh, the commits, the pull requests, the issues, around each of those objects, there are contributors who maybe make comments on the issues or comments on the pull requests. There could, there are other contributors who will review and approve and merge the pull requests. Um, there may be comments in a commit log. Um, we actually don't store those because they typically don't reflect any social interaction. It's just how the, how the developer described it. And that is in the commit, um, description in the commits table. Um, but we don't capture it as a separate item. Um, so yeah, yeah that's, um, uh, that's it. I guess that sets um, ground for some of the things I would want to discuss in the later meeting because it gives me the basic understanding of um, how to approach this and how this is structured. And then probably all we need to do, all, all I need to do is find the right definition for what I want to investigate because it makes it clear where to look. Yeah, and one of the places that you could look is there is this complete schema on a page, which wow. can be overwhelming. <laughs> However, of course, um, uh, like one thing that you can do is uh, right click on it and then save the image. Um, and so then when I've saved the image, it'll open up in whatever operating system platform tool I have for viewing images is. Um, and I suggest that only because then these, these different, like in the case of OSX, it's preview and I can use, I can just basically do that. And then, um, there's a way to, uh, Yeah, I can move it from side to side and then it's easier to sort of navigate this image. So here's issues. So here's the issues table. And if you go back to the schema, I've put all the issues stuff in yellow. So the schema tables are yellow or the main object tables are yellow, excuse me. So messages are another uh, key component, commits, uh, issues, pull requests is likely here somewhere is critical as well. So there's pull request reviews, contributor, contributor aliases. Here's pull requests. And so you can see each of these tables has a large number of columns associated with it. And some of these columns are meaningful in, certain, in the sense that they store data that helps us to do analysis. Others uh, just store data that help us establish Provenance. So, um, for in the case of the pull request, the creation date, the updated date, the closed, the merged date, all of these dates here in the middle, I think these are pretty useful dates for doing the kind of frequency analysis that you asked about with regards to commits earlier. You might yeah. also, yeah, you might also look at who are the contributors who are um, bringing these. <clears throat> pull requests forward. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a there's a lot that you can look at. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, well, this has been beneficial to me, I guess. <laughs> Probably uh, since yeah. I'm the only one on the meeting. <laughs> well, I think it's I think it's beneficial to everyone who yeah. wants to work with Augur data. So we've made some notes here. We recorded a short video, yeah. and. And I think from here, we just continue to do a little bit of this uh, periodically yeah, sure. in the Augur 8 not meeting to help people answer questions. So um, uh, I don't want to like um, spill, uh, I hope it's not like a private conversation, but um, you, you in one of the conversations we had as a side note, there are, you're saying there are questions that Kali 
is asking herself about the data that probably need answers. Yeah, are those there's related so, to like um, pulling the data from the database. I think you know we do have the schema documented in our documentation. I think we're working. I think Augur can should be and is working towards a more comprehensive and mm -hmm. an easy to navigate documentation around the schema. Mm -hmm. And part of how I'm I'm thinking about this myself is if we begin by thinking of the queries or the questions that people have that they want to answer with Augur data mm -hmm. and then writing queries using the appropriate tables and columns. Oh, okay. um, then then that helps a lot. So, and in the course of writing those queries, I will uh, also advance the documentation associated mm -hmm. with the tables that are involved in each query. And so we'll move through the notes of the Augur 8 not meeting and do this periodically. And then that will make its way into the documentation. Funny question. Um, does that mean that the the kind of queries we're pulling right now, uh, probably some of them are not what the users need, and uh, we need to like find out what? No, no. I, I actually think I actually think the 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 questions that people have. I think they know what they want to know. I think a lot of people at least have some idea what they want to know, mm -hmm. and some of it is really begins with these core objects that we note in the auger documentation and so making what happens though is that people have these questions and then they may approach the auger schema uh, without having done that before and be a little bit unsure of how to pursue answering those questions so one of the things that we're working to do here is make that knowledge more available oh. through various forms of documentation so folks know what does this field do if i want to answer this question here's a query that kind of gets there but what are the other <laughs> fields and how might i be able to enhance this query to answer the specific question that i want to answer oh sean that makes me think um just in these few minutes um can i use a note to um for example, let me use the example where, where if I want to understand commit frequency, can I use eight node the visualization to to yeah. filter out the data that I need and then it will show me the visualization for that? Yes, absolutely. Makes things um, easier. Could you just share yeah. that? Yep, I'm gonna share that right now. Oops, wrong one. So many Safari windows, so little time. Yeah. All right. Okay. So here's the Safari window, and what I'm going to take you over to is the eight knot instance. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little narrow here, so I'm going to widen that up. And if I'm on the eight knot instance, you're talking specifically about. So, for example, commits. like. Um... So if I contributions commit is a form of contribution pull request mm -hmm. is a form of contribution mm -hmm. issues are a form of contribution and here I can see commits over time, so this is the volume of commits on the chaos project over time already reflected in the eight knot dashboard and you can actually I can select day week month year for frequency, so when I go when I go to day. Um, you can see I get a pretty narrow yeah, view. Yeah, yeah. And when I go, it's so there, I, yeah, I did some drag in there, and so this is. Oh, okay. this is this is the um, by day. You can see the by day stuff is extremely granular, which is why okay. the default is month. Because okay. once you're looking at by day, you're really kind of down in the weeds. Okay. Um, uh, well, that, that does that mean that um, for some queries that uh, we've written before, like um, last Monday, it means that um, some of their some of some of the queries we've written, we cannot directly access the visualization from eight nodes. I mean, you so. Making the visualization is a separate step from writing the step from writing the query. I think uh, doing data work and doing visualization work requires you to first know how to get the data that you're going to be constructing a visualization for. Okay. And and so what we're 
the focus of this discussion is on identifying the data in the tables, and then you would have to write out the data. Um, okay. You'd have okay. To write I out get the query. I get. I get that. Um, it's important to know what data is leading to what particular visualization. Yeah, and if I was to go to the eight knot project, I'll just show you this briefly, and then I think we're almost out of time. Yeah, sure. Time under the eight knot repository, there's an eight knot folder, and under the eight knot folder, there's a queries folder, mm -hmm. and under the there are all these queries, and so you can see back here, I'm looking at contributions, right? Mm -hmm. And there is probably contributors query commits contrib profile. Um, and so I'm looking back at here and I'm thinking, okay, well, the queries are probably by visualization. So it's probably a commits query and I only have one commits query. So I'm going to click on that. And then you can see here, this is the actual query. So if you want to know, yeah. um, what the underlying query is for eight, not it, and then use that to build on, mm -hmm. you can do, you, you can do that. Yeah. Sounds like a good hack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's just kind of a real great way to jumpstart your own analysis. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, uh, so we're almost out of time. time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I uh, hope everyone got a little something out of it. Enjoy the video. And that's it for the Augur 8 Not meeting for today. Thanks, everyone. I will okay. um, see you at the next chaos meeting. All right. Bye.